Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. We'll continue with what we were doing with uh, uh, nozzle area ratio. I replotted the figure which we had in the last class. We had one case, we had the under expanded nozzle. In other words, the exit pressure here was lower than the, uh, was higher than the ambient pressure, so that the flow continues to expand. How does the flow expand when it meets outer? You have a series of rarefaction fans and when these rarefaction fans hit the boundary, they are reflected as oblique shock waves and these oblique shock waves when they, when they are, when they interact with the boundary, I get rarefaction fans which again form oblique shock waves and this trend continues. Therefore, when I look at an under expanded jet as it were, I start with a high value of P, I get first a set of expansion fans which are followed by a oblique shock wave and I, behind the oblique shock wave, since I have higher compression, I get something like a higher temperature and this higher temperature region shows up as light, you know, anything which is at a higher temperature emits more light and this is seen as luminous, luminous zone. And this again, I have rarefaction fan, again compression fan, Again, I will have another luminous zone over here. Similarly, if I have an overexpanded nozzle, the value of pressure at the exit is lower in this case than the ambient pressure. Therefore, I form something like a shock wave which matches the pressure and therefore, to be able to get the value of P equal to P A, I have something like an oblique shock wave. And these oblique shock waves, they continue to interact and I have now something like an oblique shock wave, but after the oblique shock wave, because I need to have the velocity at the center, which is still going straight and therefore, here the pressure exceeds the ambient pressure and then I have another expansion, another high pressure region and therefore, in this particular zone, I have something like a high temperature region or high pressure, high temperature region and high pressure, high temperature region gives me some light. Therefore, what is happening? In an under expanded nozzle, I have a set of initial rarefaction fans followed by oblique shock wave. In the case of over expanded nozzle, I have oblique shock waves which thereafter result in the expansion fan. Therefore, there is a distinct change in the plume if I consider a rocket moving up. If the expansion is not there, maybe I should get some bright spots. And these bright shock spots are due to the shock wave and these are known as shock diamond. I get this both for the under expanded flow as well as the over expanded flow. The only thing is that there is a phase difference. If I have over expanded flow, the shock diamond comes much earlier because I do not initially get the expansion fan, I start with the oblique shock wave, it happens much nearer, whereas if I have under expanded nozzle, it is shifted out a little later. Therefore, a trained eye, if I look at a nozzle and that is where I, I will sh again show those two pictures which, which we had earlier. Yes, see in this case, we had the nozzle, we had the oblique shock wave we would have got some shock diamonds a little later as is shown here, but in this particular test some cooling of the uh, plume was done, therefore it is not visible. This is a test wherein you have the exhaust of the nozzle and you have one shock diamond, shock diamond, shock diamond and it keeps on going in an, in an inviscid flow. You could have infinite number of these diamonds, but with the viscosity there is some dissipation and that is where I showed this particular slide which shows this flight. Uh, SR 71, in which case maybe you, you do see over here from the exhaust, 
you have one shock diamond, second one, third one, fourth one and keep on going. The other engine keeps on producing this. Therefore, the shock diamonds are a reflection of under expansion and over expansion in a nozzle. You know it is very nice to see some of these pictures and try to conjecture what is really happening. Therefore, but in practice there is another problem we have. Whenever I have these oblique shocks, you know when the oblique shocks interact very often you get something like a mark shock, a, a stem shock is formed and I have instead of having a regular reflection like this, I have a mark reflection and therefore, a shock is formed like this. Therefore, this shock wave is known as a mark shock wave that means, I have a, a incident shock, I have a reflected shock, I have a strong shock over here. Similarly, I have the incident shock over here, reflected shock and so on. This the, the shock pattern therefore, continually changes and you have a, a shock structure forming over here. Similarly, I will have something like a shock structure which is getting formed like this. That is the simplified picture gets little complicated because I have something like a mark stem shock which is formed. And that is how you see the diamonds in those particular pictures. The diamond pattern is actually something like this. Therefore, this is how the pattern looks like. Normally, I would have expected maybe incident waves like this. What we said was the diamond pattern is something like this and then you have the reflected shock which goes, but very often you have a mark stem shock and I do not observe this, this reflection pattern over here. I will have a shock like this and then it gives rise to the reflection over here and I get a diamond over here and this is what is there. Anyway, this is of uh, interest to see that whenever I have a expansion of a nozzle, the expansion could either be under expanded or it could be over expanded or it could also be something like an optimum expansion. Right? Optimum is when the exit pressure of the nozzle is equal to ambient pressure, in which case it goes straight as it were. See, there are some problems we have with, uh, with under, un, under expanded and over expanded and we told ourselves when supposing I were to have a, a rocket nozzle with let us say an area ratio of let us say around 10 or so, which gives an exit pressure let us say equal to the ambient pressure on the ground. And if this particular nozzle were to fly at an altitude wherein P A is at a higher altitude less than the value on the ground, let us say P A on the ground, then what is going to happen? My exit pressure has reduced, the nozzle becomes under expanded and therefore, I will not be able to get a high value of V j, which would have been possible had I got a high value of expansion ratio. Whereas, on the other hand, if I have a nozzle on the ground, I have a area ratio of let us say 40, which gives me an exit pressure, which is less than the ambient pressure on the ground, because now the, the, the nozzle is over expanded, then in this case, I will have flow separation, which is again not desirable, because I have shocks and I have asymmetric flow separation or I have side loads on the nozzle. Therefore, you will find that in general, we cannot always have, we cannot live with under expansion, because I lose, lose jet velocity, but at the same time, I need to have, I, I cannot have over expansion because I cannot deal with flow separation also. Therefore, there are some problems in nozzles and therefore, let us tell ourselves, supposing I have let us say a, a booster stage of a rocket and we define booster stage as a ground stage, which has to fly let us say between 0 kilometers to something like let us say up to 40 kilometers or so. 
then I cannot have a nozzle which will be perfect or optimum for all these conditions. In other words, at 0 kilometers I have 100 kilo Pascal pressure, at 40 to 50 kilometers maybe my, my pressure may be something like maybe 4 or 5 kilo Pascal right, might be lower. Therefore, my ambient pressure is decreasing and therefore, it is not right for me that I cannot have a single nozzle, I cannot have a rocket with a, a single value of epsilon or expansion ratio which will fly throughout this altitude. Therefore, I make the nozzle such that for an intermediate altitude, let us say between these two, maybe I have to fly to 40 kilometers, I design my nozzle for 110 kilometer altitude, in which case the pressure may be somewhat different from 100 and 4, maybe it is something like nearer to let us say 30 kPa. That means, my exit pressure of the nozzle, my area ratio is such that, that the exit pressure of the nozzle gives me a value P, a value of 30 kPa. Now, this particular nozzle, when the rocket takes off, what will happen? Is it over expanded, under expanded? Exactly. Now, let us just now plot it, plot the figure over here. I have the altitude and we say this the design altitude is 10 kilometers. The rocket has to operate up to an altitude let us say of 50 kilometers. This is where I have the optimum nozzle. Therefore, initially the nozzle performs in an over expanded mode and thereafter it, it performs in an under expanded mode. By having the rocket perform in an under expanded mode, I am not getting the high value of jet velocity which I could have got. Instead of choosing a value of epsilon which gives me 10 kilometer, had I chosen a value of epsilon which was corresponding to 50 kilometers, I would have got a much higher Vj. Therefore, I am not getting that high Vj, but then I, I cannot also afford to over expand my nozzle and get into some side thrust problems. And it is always, it is always that a given nozzle operates either in an under expanded mode or over expanded mode, but we try to decrease it. And as you would have seen in the earlier figures what I have shown, a booster stage has a small nozzle. Whereas, if it is the rocket is going to fire at high altitude, I will design it with a larger nozzle such that it is more that is the optimum shifts to the higher altitude and this is something which we have to keep in mind. I think something more we must remember in while we are talking of under expanded and over expanded nozzles. We told ourselves that no, nozzle over expands, that means we tell that P e is less than the value of P a, right. This is the condition. But in general, gas is flowing at high velocity in the nozzle in the divergent, and therefore, you have lot of this inertial forces as it were. And in practice, when I have the exit pressure is equal to something like 0 0.4 times the ambient pressure then only I have this problem of flow separation and shock formation. Even though ideally I said that P e and ambient pressure, in practice experiments have shown because of the inertial or the forces which are already available, the, the rocket nozzle can operate at a much lower value of P e compared to P a and this value is 0 0.4 a, 0 0.4 times and this condition was devised by Summerfield and it is known as Summerfield criterion. What is the implication of this? 
supposing I have to make a nozzle perform on the ground that means I have something like a nozzle let us now plot the shape of the nozzle convergent followed by divergent. Then my ambient pressure is equal to let us say 100 kilo Pascal on the ground then I do not need to have the nozzle the exit pressure that is the area ratio such that the exit pressure is equal to 100 kPa, but it is sufficient for me I can have a given much larger nozzle such that the exit pressure is equal to much lower as 40 kPa. And this is based on experiments because you find that the initial inertial field helps to delay the flow separation process. Having said that it is also necessary that this is also not perfectly right. In fact, the local Mach number at the zone of flow separation affects it and the value is in fact given by the value of P by P A is equal to something like 1.88 into the Mach number at the plane of exit or wherever you want flow separation to the power minus 0 0.64. In fact, based on experiments it is not only the inertial force which delays it to a constant value of 0 0.4 times the ambient pressure, but it depends on the local Mach number at which flow separation takes place and this is the value of the exit pressure for which flow separation takes place. This is again based on experiments. Therefore, I hope by now we get a feel of an for a nozzle we find that the nozzle area ratio depends on the ambient pressure. Ambient pressure keeps varying in the flight and therefore, we need variable area ratio nozzles. The moment we talk of vari variable area ratio nozzles it is also necessary for us to consider the problem of under expansion and over expansion. By under expansion we lose performance by over expansion we get side loads which are harmful. Having seen that let us go to the next phase wherein we, we also would like to know a little bit more about what is the thrust or what is the force generated by the rocket. What is it we have considered so far? We considered the jet velocity as a function of the chamber properties. We said a convergent divergent nozzle is required we looked at the area ratio A e by A t of the nozzle. We talked in terms of the of the under expanded over expanded and optimum nozzles by now we are clear about this, but now the question is what is the thrust generated by a nozzle. What is the thrust generated? You have momentum thrust m dot into V j, but we are telling ourselves each time that depending on the nozzle area ratio the exit pressure P e could be different from the ambient pressure P A. Therefore, the thrust could come from pressure also because I am not able to fully expand this therefore, I have some pressure also coming therefore, let us write the expression for the force or the force developed by a rocket which we know is equal to rate of change of momentum. Let us put the diagram down we again start from basics. Let us imagine I have a rocket here, I have a nozzle here. Let the nozzle exit pressure be P. Now, what I do is I want to gen find out what is the force is generated, therefore, I clamp the rocket on the ground and I attach it to a fixture over here. I hold it on such that I hold it on with a force F such that the rocket is stationary. No, because I'm, I am I want to find out the force which a rocket develops because my exit pressure is not is not balanced by the ambient pressure and therefore, I, I keep this rocket in a position like this. Then I make a control volume diagram about this now I, I want to find out this force. I find that everywhere on the, on the walls of the control diagram that is this imaginary lines what I am drawing now. 
let us call it as A B line, B C line, C D line. The nozzle is E F over here. I find all along this the pressures are the same and maybe pressure is acting over here, pressure ambient pressure is acting over here. Similarly, ambient pressure P A is acting over here. Ambient pressure P is also acting in this stretch, it is also acting in this stretch over here. Therefore, the only place where I have a difference in pressure is in this region. That means, sorry about this. Over this particular area, I have ambient pressure P A acting, over here P E is acting. Now, let us write the force equation for this system over here. I get force or I have a momentum which is coming. What, what is the momentum? What did I get? M dot N V J is the momentum thrust, whatever I am getting, and that is balanced by the value of force plus P A minus P E over if I say that the area ratio or the exit area is A E into A E over here. P A minus P E this is the unbalanced force in the axial direction because in all other cases this pressure balances this, this pressure balances this part over here, this part balances this and therefore only over A E I have an unbalanced pressure P E into A E in this direction. P A into E in this direction, therefore this force or rather I get the net thrust is equal to M dot into V J plus P E minus P A into the exit area. Therefore, now I have slightly modified my force or the thrust equation which originally we considered the exit pressure <coughs> to be same as P A and we got an expression as F is equal to M dot V j. Now, we tell ourselves well I have to add the pressure term P e minus P a into the value of the exit area. Well, I want to get the force or the thrust developed by a rocket. Therefore, I need the expression for M dot V j we have already derived. We told ourselves 2 gamma gamma minus 1 R T c into 1 minus P e by P c a to the power gamma minus 1. Therefore, if I can derive an expression for m dot, I can find out the force which a rocket develops. Let us do that. Now, I can be a little fast because we have been doing these things for the last 3 or 4 classes. m dot is equal to rho t v t into a t. And it is better I use the reference as A t because that is very standard that is the throat and whatever be it I need a throat. Therefore, now I say V t and V t is equal to V j rho t no V t is equal to A t sound speed at the divided by into A t over here. Now, can I now simplify it? Can I can I write it in a in in a form which is easy to do let let us let us do that. I have rho t by rho c into rho c into a t into the throat area this sound speed. Now, I have rho t by rho c and rho t by rho c we already know is equal to 2 over gamma plus 1 divided by 1 over gamma minus 1. All right. No, no. Please let let's let's keep track. In the in the last class, we derived the expression for rho t by rho c, p t by p c, and t t by t c, and we got this expression. Now, what is rho c? P c by r t c. What is a t? Sound speed. Under root. Gamma, r, t t local condition and 80 over here 
Therefore, what does this expression translate to? Therefore, m dot the mass flow rate is equal to 2 over gamma plus 1 to the power 1 over gamma minus 1 P c. I take A t over here together. Now, I have 1 over R t c. into under root gamma somewhere here let us put it into under root R T T. Now, I find you know I have T T here T C here, but this is fully here supposing I were to get a value here supposing I were to say I multiply this one by T C and T C here the expression is still the same. And now if I were to use this what is it I get? I get now under root gamma into 2 over gamma plus 1 divided by 1 over gamma minus 1 into P C A T into 1 over under root R T C into the value of under root T T by T C. Have I missed out anything? I take R T C under root outside and this gives me under root R T C. I am left with T T by T C here and the remaining things are the same. Is it all right? If, if I were to simplify this, this term, I keep this term as it is. Now, instead of T T by T C, I can write it as 2 over gamma plus 1 to the power half T T by T C is 2 over gamma plus 1 and it was under root. And now, I want to combine the whole thing. I tell this is equal to under root gamma into 2 over gamma plus 1 to the power 1 over gamma minus 1 plus half this is equal to gamma plus 1 that is 1 over gamma minus 1 plus half 2 plus gamma minus 1 gamma plus 1 divided by 2 into gamma minus 1 into 1 over R T C under root is what I get into P C A T and this gives me you know this is all a function of gamma. Let me define under root gamma into 2 over gamma plus 1 in to the power gamma plus 1 divided by 2 gamma minus 1 as capital gamma is equal to under root gamma divided by 2 into gamma plus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 divided by 2 gamma minus 1. <coughs> Excuse me. In which case the value of capital gamma becomes or in terms of capital gamma m dot is equal to capital gamma divided by under root R T C into P C A T. This gives me my net flow rate, mass flow rate. Is it all right? Now, let us find out what is the mass flow rate through the nozzle. You find that for a given mass flow rate in kilograms per second, if I were to use this expression as something which transfers the mass flow rate into chamber pressure, I get something like this is something like a transfer function. What do you mean by transfer function? I get if I were to rearrange this equation, I get P c is equal to m dot divided by a t that is mass flux through the throat into 1 over gamma by R T C under root or rather R T C divided by gamma I take it upstairs I can write this as you know for a given mass flux through the nozzle this represents something like a transfer function which 
will give me the chamber pressure that means RTC by gamma is something like a like a function which converts the mass flux into pressure and what is the what is the value let us see the unit of under root RTC what is the unit of RTC joule per kilogram Kelvin into Kelvin under root joule is Newton meter and Newton meter is equal to kilogram meter per second square into meter Kelvin Kelvin gets cancelled therefore you have meter per second. Therefore you find that the value of 1 over gamma under root RTC gamma is just a function of gamma has units of velocity meter per second and this particular value under root RTC by gamma is what is spoken of as characteristic velocity. it is unit of therefore I can now write my value of m dot is equal to from that expression I get m dot is equal to p c a t 1 over c star where c star I define as a characteristic velocity which is equal to under root RTC by capital gamma. What did I do? M dot is equal to PCAT into divided by the value of R under root RTC by gamma where this has unit of velocity and therefore I call it as characteristic velocity. Is it all right? We are just defining something because you find that the unit is velocity and therefore given a rocket let us say I have a rocket chamber I am told that the throat area is so much a t and if I know that the mass flow through the nozzle is so many kilograms per second I can go back using this transfer function find out what is the value of chamber pressure something like a transfer function which we call as characteristic velocity. It is an extremely important parameter to characterize the mass generation rate of a propellant we will come back to this. Therefore what is it we ended up doing we wanted to find out the value of m dot and the value of m dot we said was equal to let us put it down I have the value there and therefore I can write my now my force is equal to let us write it out let us substitute the value of gamma under root gamma. 2 over gamma plus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 divided by 2 into gamma minus 1 into divided by under root RTC into PCAT plus PE minus PA into A e this is the force generated A is A, A is the exit area which is a suffix E is it all right then let us simplify that expression and get a value for the thrust generated by a rocket for F is equal to under root gamma again we have to take it till we are totally done with it 2 over gamma plus 1 PCAT where did VJ go VJ is here what is VJ equal to gamma RT all right divided by now something has been lost in the mass itself RTC has forgotten no no please please correct me let us first find out what is the value of M dot M dot is equal to under root gamma 2 over gamma plus 1 gamma plus 1 divided by 2 gamma minus 1 PCAT by under root RTC 
this m dot what is the value of vj vj is equal to under root 2 gamma rt divided by gamma minus 1 into 1 minus p by pc to the power gamma minus 1 divided by gamma and now you have plus p minus p a divided by a e. Therefore, now if I take p c a t outside and I simplify this whole expression again, I can I cut off some numbers, I get r t c over here and this was equal to 2 r chamber temperature T c over here. Therefore, r and r goes cancel and therefore, my expression for the thrust is equal to P c a t into. Now, I look at these, these numbers, you know you I still carry under root gamma 2 over gamma plus 1. T c a t is taken outside, R T c is gone, I still have under root of 2 gamma by gamma minus 1 into 1 minus P by P c to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma plus, now I divided I have P e by P c minus P a by P c to a e by a t is epsilon, area ratio a e by a t. No, no, let us try to follow it because we must understand each term properly. And this whole term what I have here, I denote it by a coefficient c f and I say that the force generated by a rocket or thrust generated is equal to C f <coughs> into chamber pressure into A t, where C f is under root gamma 2 over gamma plus 1 into under root 2 gamma gamma minus 1 to the power half into 1 minus this is the expression what I get. Let us therefore write out the final expression for C f, I think we should not write it again and again I think. We, we know what it consists of. I want to find out what will be the expression if we have P is equal to P c for an optimum. <coughs> the value of C f that is P is equal to P a optimum then in this case this goes to 0 and in fact when let us compare these two terms first. You know what will happen is when the ambient pressure is equal to the exit pressure this term knocks out, but then you are increasing the value of P a and therefore, the value of C f corresponding to the value of P e is equal to P a will be maximum and that is denoted by C f 0 or rather I write C f 0 which corresponds to the optimum compared to C f I write it as C f 0 or let us put it C f 0 here is equal to I just write the whole whole expression other than this particular term which goes to 0 and I get C f 0 is equal to under root gamma 2 over gamma plus 1 gamma plus 1 divided by 2 gamma minus 1 into I have the value of under root 2 gamma gamma minus 1 into 1 minus P e by Whereas, if I have something like the exit pressure not being equal to the ambient pressure, if I have something like an over expanded nozzle, I get a negative term. If I have <coughs> excuse me optimum expansion when which in which P a is equal to P a this becomes 0. If I have an under expanded nozzle, I have positive thrust and in all cases when P e is equal to P a, I get the maximum thrust f because in one case what is happening is the contribution from this increases, but the contribution from this decreases and only under the condition C f is equal to C f 0 I get the 
maximum thrust. That means an adapted nozzle always gives me maximum thrust. Otherwise, because of under expansion, I lose thrust. Otherwise, it is the other way around. Therefore, let us now try to take a look at some of the results from this expression. You know, all what we did was this is the value we derived, and this is the value we get for the optimum value. I took gamma minus 1 outside over here, and now if I take a look at the optimum value of Cf, which I call as thrust coefficient, that is Cf is thrust coefficient, Cf dot is optimum thrust coefficient. What is it I find? As I increase the value, as I increase the value of the value of P C by P E, that means I, I, I over here the value is P E by P C, that means I, I have higher expansion ratios, higher value of P C over here, lower values of P C over here. As I increase the value of P C by P E, I get a higher and higher value of C F and the values which I, which are realizable are around 2.4, 2.5 and you find that a lower value of gamma gives me a higher value of Cf than a higher value of gamma. That means the value of the thrust coefficient is sensitive to the value of gamma in addition to being a function of Pc by Pe. The same thing I plot on this particular diagram wherein I plot the thrust coefficient as a function of gamma. I find that at low value of Pc by Pe, gamma does not influence the thrust coefficient at all. Whereas if I have <coughs> a, 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 a small value that means I have P e by P c which is a very small number the variation in gamma causes a considerable change that means a decreased value of gamma will give me a higher value of C f. Therefore what is it I have done? We, we looked at the thrust coefficient. optimum thrust when you have the case of P equal to P C, C F dot into P C A T, we find that the value of C F is also a function of gamma in addition to being a function of P E by P C. A small value of P E by P C or a larger value of chamber pressure gives me a higher thrust coefficient. This gamma depends on this value. If this value is not large, is not small, like for instance, I have a low chamber pressure, then gamma is not influential. But otherwise, a small value of gamma will give me a higher value of CF0. Okay. This is all about thrust in a nozzle and how now what we have done? We have simplified the whole nozzle calculations and what is it we have done? We told ourselves, well m dot the mass flow through a nozzle is equal to 1 over C star into chamber pressure into throat diameter, where C star was equal to under root RTC by gamma, which, is, which we called as characteristic velocity, unit is being meter per second. And we said force in a nozzle is equal to Cf, whether under expanded optimum or over expanded is equal to P c into A t. Two simple expressions. Therefore, whenever we make a nozzle, we go and evaluate the nozzle for its C star, but C star does not come from the nozzle. We will see why. Because we are talking of the transfer function between mass flow rate and the chamber pressure. Whereas, the thrust coefficient tells me what a nozzle is doing. It takes the chamber pressure multiply by a coefficient it gives you the force and that is why we say this is the performance of a nozzle. I think I need to go a little deeper into this particular expression. Therefore, let us write out these two expressions in a slightly different form and dwell on this for maybe next couple of minutes. And with that I think we would have done some justice to the nozzle. But before that I would like to again emphasize what is it we have done so far? 
we took a nozzle we assume the nozzle is adiabatic reversible flow isentropic flow one dimensional flow so far it's all one dimensional and for one dimensional flow we derived all the expressions for vj we derived the expression for under expanded over expanded maybe flow outside the nozzle and all that and now we find i can write m dot is equal to 1 over c star into pcat we also derived the expression for the thrust from basics we find it's equal to a coefficient into pc into at now if i play with these two equations i find over here i find pcat pcat common therefore can i somehow put this together can i substitute pcat from mass equation into the force equation and if i were to do it i get cf i get pcat is equal to m into c star therefore i get here m into c star m dot into c star and now i get the force thrust developed divided by m dot is equal to cf into c star and what is f divided by m dot what is the thrust per unit mass flow rate that is we are talking of f dt impulse divided by mass of the propellant which is there impulse per unit mass is specific impulse isp or rather what is it we have got we have got isp is equal to thrust coefficient into c star but we had got an expression for isp earlier the expression for isp was vj what was vj vj was when the exit pressure was matching the ambient pressure that is when we derived the expression for we got the value now you have the contribution coming from the exit pressure also and to some extent what is happening we never consider flow in a nozzle therefore what is it telling you it is telling you isp depends on the performance of the chamber and what does the chamber do chamber in generating or producing high pressure and what does cf do cf is in the nozzle which converts this high pressure into high velocity or the nozzle effectiveness or the nozzle's role and therefore cf is a figure of merit of the nozzle how it converts the high pressure into velocity and c star is a figure of merit of the chamber in that it will tell you how high pressure is generated in the nozzle because of some mass flow rate therefore you have a composite index therefore isp is a product of pressure generating capacity in the rocket and how is pressure generated through c star whereas once the pressure is generated the nozzle helps you to generate the high velocity high jet velocity therefore you have both the chamber capacity that is a propellant to generate hot gases and cf which means the effectiveness of the nozzle therefore isp is equal to cf plus c star but you know what we have done so far is all ideal one dimensional and all that therefore it's necessary for me to go back and ask myself is everything cannot be ideal therefore there has to be some something like some eff efficiencies and therefore can i talk in terms of efficiencies for mass generation and efficiencies for thrust the mass generation we decided in terms of c star therefore if i have to put an efficiency for mass generation it is equal to c star which is experimentally observed divided by the ideal value which we derived in this class and what was the ideal value under root rtc by capital gamma and this is where therefore all what we do in an experiment you you take a rocket you find out what is the rate at which mass is getting delivered out 
you find out the ideal and you say it is eta c star and you will find that the values are quite high of the order of 0.98 to 0.99. We will do some problems on this. How do you get the thrust value efficiency for thrust? You call it as thrust correction factor. and you denote it by zeta f correction factor which is equal to we say C f actually measured in a chamber divided by C f whatever we calculated was ideal. And we use the ideal uh, value to find out the efficiency and again these efficiencies are quite, quite large for nozzles of the order of again 0 0.98, 0 0.97 and so on. Therefore, what we have done in today's classes we looked at the high temperature and high pressure gases generated by the propellant. We expressed it in terms of C star. That means, C star tells you what is the rate at which hot gases gets generated from the propellant and therefore, we, we wrote it as m dot is equal to 1 over C star into P C A T, where P C is the chamber. We called it as a transfer function. And the expression for this was extremely simple is equal to R T C by the particular value of gamma. We also talked in terms of the thrust coefficient which is used to generate or describe the thrust developed by a rocket F is equal to P C A T and we found out the expression for C F and also how C F varies and we talked in terms of a thrust correction factor which is equal to C f actual by C f which is calculated based on ideal one dimensional theory. Sometimes an effective jet velocity is defined in the literature to determine the composite, composite of the jet or the velocity thrust or the momentum thrust and the pressure thrust. Let us examine what this effective jet velocity is. Let us say that the total thrust is given by the momentum thrust which is equal to m dot into v j and the pressure thrust is because at the nozzle exit the pressure P e is greater than P a and into A e this becomes the pressure thrust. Now, if I have to put this thrust in terms of an effective jet velocity I say F is equal to m dot into V effective and this is equal to m dot into V j plus you have the same thing P e minus P a into area and therefore, the effective jet velocity is equal to the jet velocity plus you have P e minus P a divided by m dot into A e and this is defined as the effective jet velocity and when a nozzle is not adapted that means, the exit pressure is different from its ambient pressure at that particular altitude well the effective jet velocity is different from the jet velocity at the exit of the nozzle. This is to take care of the pressure thrust in addition to the momentum thrust over here. We continue with nozzles in the next class, but in the next class we will try to take a look how do I contour a nozzle and what are the approximations from the ideal cases what I have studied and this is what I will do in the next class. Well thank you then. I think that's about it.